Here is a flashback to the very first guest on the very first episode of this program 13 years ago. You and I had a mutual friend, Pat Moynihan. When Pat Moynihan, when you were running his show and I was his colleague, a majority in the Senate used to mean 51 votes. Since we've gotten elected, Barack Obama and Joe Biden, there's a new majority in the Senate, 60 votes. What the president's been able to do has been truly remarkable with the help of a Democratic Congress. And so those who don't get, didn't get everything they wanted, this time to just buck up here, understand that we can make things better, continue to move forward, and but not yield the playing field to those folks who are against every everything that we stand for in terms of the initiatives we put forward. You know, I, did, I didn't think of myself as running Pat Moynihan's show. Liz Moynihan ran Pat Moynihan's well, that's show, true. as you can remember. That's true. That could be Joe Biden's argument for re-election today. For those who didn't get everything they wanted, it's time to just buck up here, understand we can make things better, continue to move forward, but not yield the playing field to those folks who are against everything that we stand for. That is certainly what Pat Moynihan would be saying if he were still here to campaign for his dear friend, Joe Biden's reelection. Daniel Patrick Moynihan served 24 years in the Senate with Joe Biden before the Senate from his position as a tenured Harvard professor. Professor Moynihan went back and forth to government as first an assistant secretary of labor for President John F. Kennedy. Pat Moynihan continued to serve in the administration of President Lyndon Johnson after President Kennedy's assassination. In those days, it was common for presidents to appoint members of the opposite party uh, to some important positions, and so Pat Moynihan served as ambassador to India and ambassador to the United Nations in Republican administrations. The story of Pat Moynihan's life growing up, the son of a single mother who was a bartender while he was shining shoes in Times Square, to become a public policy visionary is told in the new PBS American Masters documentary titled simply Moynihan. Pat Moynihan wrote probably the first memo about global warming in the American government written in 1969. And that is part of how the Nixon presidency became so active on the environment. The Environmental Protection Agency was created during the Nixon presidency, thanks in part to Daniel Patrick Moynihan. Pat Moynihan's primary focus while working in the White House was on social policy, especially ways to improve the welfare system and change it into a program that could actually help lift people out of poverty. He's trying to get Johnson to understand this culture of poverty and racism that was assaulting the poor Negro family. The insight that he had was that we have to go beyond civil rights legislation to address the cumulative effects of chronic racial and economic subordination. And what he was saying was that we need to move beyond issues of liberty and address issues of equality. Johnson incorporates that thought into one of the most important addresses any president has ever given. But freedom is not enough. You do not take a person who for years has been hobbled by chains and liberate him, bringing up to the starting line of a race and then say, you are free to compete with all the others and still justly believe that you have been completely fair. This is the Thus, core of the liberal anthem that LBJ stood for. I remember listening very carefully to President Johnson's speech at Howard University in 1965, and I said, you know, this, this resonates with me. And it was based on the Moynihan Report. 
One of the reasons why Moynihan Report ended up blowing up in Moynihan's face is the document was never meant for public perusal. It is written in a very bombastic way. It, it was written to get the attention of politicians. Unless you took the time, and who does, to look into what Moynihan himself said were the causes, you would have taken up this view that these people just have to get their families together and everything will be fine. And that was what many in the black community believed they had to rebut. The advocacy for unequal preferential treatment, the advocacy for a minimum level of income for the family, the advocacy for a big jobs program. The kind of solutions Moynihan advocated for are, I would say, even in a time, were radical uh, and are very, very radical now. You know, the Moynihan Report it was the last point where you had a federal official making an argument, an implicit argument, for a massive investment in African-American communities, massive benevolent investment, and tying that case for investment to history. That is something that just really wouldn't happen today. The controversies that followed Professor Moynihan in and out of government did not diminish student interest in Professor Moynihan's courses when he returned to teaching. I was a freshman at Harvard in 67, and Pat Moynihan's course was well known because he was a brilliant man, but he had practical experience. When, when Professor Moynihan was elected to the Senate, he worked his way up to the chairmanship of the Senate Finance Committee because he knew from his time working on welfare policy in the White House that the Senate Finance Committee actually controls not just taxation and international trade, but most of the important social policy of the federal government, including its biggest programs, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, unemployment insurance, and welfare. In the Senate, Pat Moynihan worked relentlessly to improve and strengthen all of those programs, knowing that they were crucial to the income security of millions of Americans. Senator Moynihan was viewed in the Senate with enormous respect, sometimes in comprehension, and sometimes a little fear. And the fear, of course, came from not wanting to go up against him in debate because he'd find something that you hadn't thought of and you'd be in trouble. Moynihan hated the notion that government is the problem. His own rejoinder to that was, if you have contempt for government, you will get contemptible government. There's no doubt in my mind that if Pat Moynihan had been airdropped into New England in the 1770s, he would have been one of the most prominent members of our founding fathers. One of my colleagues on the Republican side said, you know, you couldn't have a Senate of 100 Moynihans, but you sure need a Senate with one or two. What I learned from Senator Moynihan is commitment. I was there for just some of the more than 40 years he spent working on policies designed to strengthen the income security and improve the lives of people with the greatest economic struggles in this country. He spent decades trying to steer American foreign policy in more enlightened and helpful directions for this country and the world. And if you told him a project might take 30 years, then he'd say, well, then we'd better start now. And that's how long it took to complete the project now known as the glorious new Moynihan train hall at Penn Station in Manhattan. Senator Moynihan had the vision for that new train station 30 years ago. He went to work on it then, moving the federal government and state government and local government and Amtrak a bit closer to getting it done every year. Decades ago, decades before Moynihan Train Hall was completed, he had the architectural model of what you see there today in his office. He didn't live long enough to see that project completed or to ever see his name on that wall. But as with so many other things that he worked on, his commitment lives after him. Your guide through the PBS American Masters documentary, Moynihan, is the authoritative narration of recent Oscar nominee, Jeffrey Wright. He rose to national celebrity as America's most famous representative to the United Nations. 
One word that's attached to you wherever you go until you're probably sick to death of it is flamboyant. The flamboyant Patrick Moynihan. Am I embarrassed to speak for a less than perfect democracy? Not one bit. Find me a better one. Moynihan is streaming on, P on the PBS website, uh, pbs.org, until April 26th and is also available on the Canopy streaming service. Go to pbs.org, click Shows, and click American Masters for Moynihan. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.